So this is uh, the seventh example program for uh, Unit 4A arrays. And what we're going to do in this uh, program is examine multidimensional arrays. To start off with, we'll look at a two-dimensional array. Um, so in this program, uh, one thing I do want to point out is this uh, library that I've included, uh, which is the C standard library, which I'm going to use the system function out of uh, a little bit later on. Um, but for now, let's just talk about 2D arrays. So we know a little bit about arrays, and we know typically when we declare an array, we need to declare a constant um, to represent the size of the array. A two-dimensional array has two sizes. There's a, a number of rows and a number of columns. Um, so to start off with, we'll declare uh, one constant for each of the dimensions that we're going to use. So we've decided that there's going to be three rows and two columns to our matrix, okay, or two-dimensional array. So uh, let's actually declare it now. When we declare a two-dimensional array, there are two subscripts, okay, the first one representing the number of rows, if you will, and the second one representing the number of columns. So always these two square brackets. So I've called my array table, and it's an, a two-dimensional array of doubles. Um, I've decided to initialize it as well, just to some arbitrary values here. Um, now, I have inserted some white space in order to make it a little bit clearer to me um, how this rows and columns thing is set up. Um, you should understand that uh, a two-dimensional array or a multi-dimensional array is strictly a logical construct. Um, how the actual array exists in memory is still the same way a, a one-dimensional array exists. It's one continuous block of memory. Um, what ends up happening is when we specify the subscript for the row and column, uh, what the program is doing is a, a little bit of a translation of those two coordinates uh, into the actual coordinate, the actual offset where the element is stored. Um, any rate, I digress. I've added a little bit of white space in here just to make it a little bit clearer in my mind uh, where the rows and columns, uh, uh, where the rows specifically begin and end. So next we'll uh, do some processing or actually just output the, uh, uh, the 2D array. Um, so typically with a, a single dimensional array, you uh, use a for loop to go through it. So since there's two dimensions, we're going to use two for loops. So I've got a little bit of pseudocode here. For each row in the array, I want to output a fresh line and then for each column in each row, uh, in the row, output the current value. Okay, so let's code that. Okay, so I have a for loop with a row counter going up to rows. Output a new line, and then a column loop. Okay, this loop will actually uh, go uh, four times for each row, so 12 times in total. A column counter going up to columns, and then each time in a field width of six, I'm outputting my array at position row, at position column. So those two uh, coordinates to find the, the proper element that I want to uh, output. So let's run this. And I can see what I've produced is, is basically what I was looking for. Um, so I've got some blank lines between the various different rows and the columns are nicely, nice and neatly uh, organized. Okay, so that's a, a two dimensional array. Once you understand the basics of arrays and two-dimensional arrays, you can actually go into multi-dimensional arrays that are larger, like three and four and five-dimensional arrays. Um, so I'll, I'll give you an example. We'll actually create a, a three-dimensional array uh, this time. Before I do that, I just want to uh, put a little break in my output. So I've output a couple of blank lines, and I've used the system function to uh, pause the console. Uh, by the way, the, with the system function, it's allowing you to use uh, the OS-specific uh, uh, command. So this is a, a command window command that will only work in, in, in Windows. Uh, you got to be careful using the system function. But uh, it's useful for this example, so I'll leave it as is. So the first thing I do is I'm going to create my uh, a constant representing that third dimension. I've called it layers. Okay, I've set it equal to two. Now, normally I would do this up at the top of my source code, but for the purpose of walking you through uh, and building this example step by step, uh, I'm going to put it here. 
declaring a three-dimensional array looks like you might expect. Okay, in this case, I've called my array box, and there are the three dimensions. So I've used layers, followed by rows, followed by columns. A little bit difficult to represent in the uh, 2D world of my source code, uh, but what I've done is I've introduced a little bit of blank space here just to show the break between the two layers. Okay, so that's how I'm going to represent that. So just as before, with a two-dimensional array, we used a for loop for each of the dimensions. Um, same deal with a three-dimensional array. So since there, since there is the three dimensions, there are, in fact, three for loops all nested together. Uh, the outer for loop now is uh, for each layer in the array, going from zero to up to layers. And then inside of that, I'm going for each row in the layer. And then inside of that, I'm going for each col uh, column in the row. Okay. So finally, drilling down uh, deep inside that, I'm accessing box at layer zero or one, uh, row zero, one, or two, column zero, one, two, or three, whichever counter we happen to be on. So let's try running that. So we can see there's my 2D array. Okay, that's no problem. Press any key, that's the system pause. And here's my 3D array. So I can see it output the first layer, row by row, column by column, a bit of blank space, and then the second layer, row by row, column by column. So that uh, gives you a little introduction to multi-dimension arrays.